Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be making these awesome hover animations all inside Adobe XD. This will take us less than 10 minutes and just one single artboard. So without further ado, let's just get started. So I am starting my own UI design course, which is a crash course of five days only. I will teach you everything there is to learn about UI design through these five days. We will be doing a face-to-face personal classes where you will learn a lot. There are only 20 spots left. So go to this link or the link given in the description and sign up and book your spot now. I already have my colors saved here. So I'll just select this color and this will be a background color. I will create another square, which is not too big, not too small either. I will place it in the center and make sure that the border radius is somewhere around 60 to 80 pixels. Uh, based on what your liking is. I think I'll set it to about 65 pixels. Wow, this looks good. Now I'll remove the border and I will give it the color that I gave the first icon. Now that I've set up a color just like this, I will give it a shadow of the same exact color. Now this was more of a trend in 2019, but I think it's everlasting. 12 pixels by 24 pixels Y and B values. I will reduce the of course, the opacity of this shadow to about 45%, uh, maybe less 30% based on what you require. Inside this box, I will place an icon which I have already saved in my downloads folder. Now this is one vector or SVG icon and I've placed it in the center. I'll change the color to white, of course. Now there is now there's some tricks that we need to use right here. So what we will do is create a rectangle around this bigger rectangle here and I'll, I'll remove the borders for this and give it the same color as this blue. I'll duplicate this rectangle right here and I will change the color to white. Now we have two rectangles over the top here. I will make sure that it's placed close to each other. Also, I will, I will shift the white one to the left here and I will probably increase the width as well a little bit. Not too much, just a little bit. That, that's about it. Now I will select both of these and group them by clicking Command G, Control G. I'll place them be below everything else. And what I will do now is I will use this background rectangle, which is the one with the border radius and choose this group in the background. Select Command Shift M or Control Shift M and this will mask it. As you can see, the inside rectangles are now hidden and masked underneath this bigger rectangle. I will shift this group a little bit so that I have a full blue rectangle right here. That's perfect. I can give a shadow, of course, if I place another rectangle with a shadow below it, but that's up to you. Now for the next step, I will create two more rectangles just like this, just like the older ones, but I'll make sure they're much smaller. One will be white and the other will be blue as usual. Now I'll tell you why in a second, I will group these two together as well. Now the next step, I'll make sure that this SVG icon is on the top. I will select the rectangles in the back as well as this SVG icon and click on the keyboard Command Shift M or Control Shift M. As you can see again, it's masked this group in the back. I will basically shift it and also adjust the height a little height and width a little bit of these rectangles so that it covers the entire area of this SVG. Looks good. Now we have everything intact. We will select this entire group here with all the elements intact. And on the keyboard, I will click Command K or Control K to make it into a component. Now inside the component, I have this plus icon on the right. I will click on this to add a state called hover state right here. Now Adobe XD automatically sets it in as a hover animation. So while the hover state is selected, I'll make some minute changes. First of all, I'll double click here on the mask group. Inside the mask group, I have this rectangle, which is basically this uh, blue rectangle masking everything. And I will increase the width just like this. This tutorial, of course, you can uh, change the artboard size based on what your preferences are. I'll increase the width, of course. And while I'm, if I've increased, I will also increase the rectangle width as well. Now, this blue rectangle inside here, I'll double click on it and I will sh hold shift and literally shift it to the right. I will bring this white bar from the left 
and basically shift it in with this mask and just increase the width to fit the entirety of the mask. One more thing I'll do is, as you can see, the SVG is here. I will double click on it and we, we had already placed a mask inside it. So I'll shift this mask a little bit. Also increase the rectangles if you have to, to fill in the entirety of this. Another thing I need to do is double click on this mask or SVG, press enter, and now you can see all the anchor points. I will basically select all of these anchor points just like that. This is super simple. Now that this cloud has been selected, I can click on just one anchor point and shift it out like this. So it is out of bounds of this blue and I can't really see it anymore. What I can also do is shift uh, this SVG or this mask uh, so that the search is in the center of this blue rectangle and also in the center of this bigger rectangle. Looking good. One, one more touch I will add is basically select the bottom most rectangle which is giving our shadow and increase the width of this as well because we don't want it to look like an abomination of sorts. Looking good. Now, if I go back to default state, as you can see, it is now default state and hover state. I'll go back to default state. I'll go to prototype. And as you can see, all the settings have already been done by Adobe XD. I will change the easing from ease out to ease in out. Change the duration from 3 second, 0 0.3 seconds to about 0 0.8 seconds. That should look good. Now, if I go to this prototyping or this desktop preview button, and it'll open up this preview right here. If I hover over this, oh, see how this animate? It looks so freaking good. There are some few smaller glitches which you can fix over time, but this looks amazing. Now our next design is not really that difficult to make. I will create a basic rectangle like I did before, place it in the center here. Once this rectangle is set up, I'll go to the assets panel on the left here. I've already saved this linear gradient, which is this red gradient. And as you can see, it looks, it now has this very warm red appeal to it. I will increase the border radius again to about 65 pixels or maybe less based on your choice. I have already downloaded a bell icon, which will import here. And I will place it right about in the center of this rectangle. I will give it the same gradient or what I can do is just pick up this color picker from here and give it this light red. Now it looks much better. Give it a slight shadow as well. So 12 by 24 should look good. And as you can see, it now gives a very warm and cozy appeal. That is what I'm going for here. I will also place an ellipse in the background, which will be a white ellipse. I'll reduce or remove the border from here and I'll make sure that it is placed behind this bell. So half of it is cut off from the top. And now this looks pretty good. One more thing that I need to do is place some text over this to indicate how many notifications I have. So for this one, I'll set four notification and I will set this for probably in the middle here and make it this size, about that size. That's good. I will duplicate this ellipse here. So I have two ellipses now and place it right below this four, just like that. I will select the four, go to object, click on path, and under path, I have convert to path. Looking good. Now this is basically, essentially a maskable vector now. So what I'll do is click on four, click on this circle, select both of them together and say command shift M or control shift M to mask them. As you can see, I have this white, I have this white circle inside the four mask. I will place this circle right about where I placed this older circle right here. As simple as that. So I will select everything here and click Command K, Control K on the keyboard to make it a component. Inside the component, I'll click on this plus icon again and hover state as usual. While I have hover state selected, we will increase the size of this bell, just scale it up a little bit and place it in the center as usual. Uh, place it in the center so that the white dot in the background is now not visible. Rotate this a little bit so, so as to give it that bell uh, ringing vibe. And over this, if I go back to the layers panel, uh, I'll be able to see this mask group 34. Click on this mask group to open it. And inside I have this white circle. So now what I'll do is bring it inside this four 
and increase the size, just scale the circle up while placing it right about here as well. This is looking good. I'll just fix it a little more, just a little more. And that is perfect. Also check out my new UI design course. It'll help every beginner out a lot and also people who just want to brush up their skills. Yep, so now our effect is done. We go back to default state and inside prototype, I will go to default state and in easing, I will select easing out, duration 0.8 seconds. Maybe for this one, I'll say 0.6 seconds. And let's preview this. If I click on this, ooh, see how that four floats in? And that white dot seems to blend in with that four since it's hidden in the background. Now this looks really nice. For our fourth passcode animation, I'll just remove this from here. And I will create a rectangle like this. Shouldn't be too high, of course. That's perfect. Place it in the center of the artboard, remove the borders, and increase the border radius to about 60 pixels again. You can reduce this to 45 or whatever you like. Perfect, looking good. Now I'll reduce the opacity of this to about 80%. So it kind of blends in with the blue hue in the background. So I'll create a text field here real quick. And inside the text field, I'll paste this dot which I've copied from the internet. This is the password dot if you search for it in Google. And I, what I will do is just copy it over here so that I have a couple of these here. And I'll place it in the center like this. I'll reduce the text size to about 120. Looking good. Now I'll place it on the left here and I'll place an eye on the right so that it looks as if I can view it if I place my cursor over it. So I'll place this eye right here, make it bigger of course, should be scaled up to the same level as these circles and also give them the same color as these little circles. Now these circles are text and not an icon so I can't change the height of this. So what I'll do is go to object, say path and click on convert to path. Now these are now, now these circles are now a path just like that. I will copy this entire thing right here, right on top, just like this. Inside here, I'll place some text like boss man, <laughs> boss man 69 or some weird looking password and place it right here. Of course, reduce the text size as, as you please uh, based on how much space you have, of course. And I'll place it just like that in the middle. I'll also make this boss man into a object by clicking on path and convert to path. Perfect. Now we have everything here. I'll group both of these together, just like this. I would basically copy this rectangle, this white rectangle in the background and place it over everything else. What I'll do next is select everything here together and say Command Shift M or Control Shift M to mask it. Now this rectangle is masking this lower rectangle right here. Now we will click on this and say Command K, or Control K to make it into a component. I'll click on this plus icon again, hover state as usual. And of course, while the hover state is selected, what we will do now is first of all, shift this rectangle, adjust this rectangle in the background to the bottom here, just fix it with the bottom right here. Perfect. I will also bring this down and I'll reduce the height of these. So they seem as if they're shifting perspective a little bit, of course. And I will place it in the center of this rectangle as well. I will also reduce the height of this and just just to give it that feel of change, change of perspective, I'll put it right there. Also, I'll bring the, this rectangle and this eye and everything to the bottom here so that it fits perfectly. Now, if we go to default state, go to prototype, change the easing to ease out, ease in out, duration to 0.6 seconds. And let's preview this. If I hover over this, oh, this looks real nice. If you liked today's tutorial, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I post every Monday and Thursday. Also click that bell icon right next to the subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye and God bless.